Now, as I'm sure we're all aware, the last year has been a bit of a struggle for, I don't know, I'd say pretty much every single person on the planet. There's been the pandemic, extreme weather conditions, violence, riots, Netflix commissioned Riverdale for another season. When will the suffering end? But amongst all that, there have been a few moments of sheer joy that have kept us all uh, relatively sane, I guess. Captain Tom Moore raised a bag and a half for the NHS. This bad bitch started a business in Kenya making bricks out of recycled plastic. And of course, the thousands of people around the globe that have been working tirelessly creating vaccines. Listen, I don't care if I grow a third leg or get tracked by Bill Gates, I've got gigs to go to. I'd like to thank not only science, but also science. But perhaps the most unlikely heroes of the shitstorm that is the last 12 months that we desperately need, but truly don't deserve, come in the form of Jedward. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Jedward, it's probably best to Google them, it's a long story. Now, recently, they've been, to put it bluntly, obliterating boomers on Twitter. Seriously, they've dished out more roasts than Toby Carvery. From anti-vaxxers to gay rights, here are some of Jedward's top tier tweets that really tickled my pickle. So after the Catholic Church announced that they ain't gonna do same-sex marriages, pretends to be shocked, the quirky twins responded with, let the rainbow into your cold, damp churches. Rihanna is more of a pope than you, yeah, they did actually at the actual Pope in that tweet. Bold move, but I respect it. We found love in a popeless place. Beautiful. That is a work of art as far as I'm concerned. Now, after the human foghorn that is, Piers Morgan decided that it would be a really great idea to just throw a tantrum on national television because grown men do that. Sharon Osbourne decided to pipe up and stick up for him for some reason. I don't... I don't really know why. He's not gonna shag you. And of course, our heroes Jedward took to Twitter in true Jedward fashion. We aren't with you. We don't stand with you. It's a no from us. I'm sorry you're not going to boot camp. This next one's not even a roast. I just thought it was funny. Biden, we could have sent you some hairspray for those flyaways. We got you, bro. And the peers de resistance telling Piers Morgan to kiss my ass in Irish. I love my bilingual kings. In conclusion, Stan Jedward for clear skin. I am dead scared of ever meeting Meg the Stallion because she's gonna be like, yeah, shake that ass, white girl. And I'm gonna be like, I can't, Meg. I cannot. I'm sorry, Meg. You know, TikTokers just continue to exceed my expectations, you know? Like, how much shit can people talk before people start to realize that TikTokers, <laughs> well, they'll just keep winning, said TikTok degenerate Bryce Hall and literally no one else ever. Let me just do what all creators do when they get caught out for doing something problematic and just backtrack for a second. So this Bryce Hall tweet came about after himself and a bunch of other creators that I have never heard of before announced battle of the platforms to see which platform out of YouTube or TikTok do we hate slightly less than the other. I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that that's gonna be an incredibly difficult competition. Why has it always got to be boxing? You know, why couldn't it be something like who can crochet a blanket the quickest or who can go the longest without doing something problematic? Actually, that one wouldn't take too long. Hmm. And that's when King of the Fuckboys, Bryce Hall, piped up on Twitter to defend TikTokers um, through the only way that he knows how, which was bragging about how much money he earns. Pack it up, Mr. Krabs. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Bryce Hall and his work, and I sincerely hope that you are. Here are some of Bryce Hall's most memorable career highlights. Cheating on his girlfriend, allegedly. Hosting a party during a pandemic and having his power shut off by the LA police. Pissing off of a balcony onto fans at a YouTube convention. Man, he really is the gift that keeps on giving. You know, he's doing such a great job at showing the public how respectful and kind and hardworking TikTokers truly are. Say it with me, kids. Stop giving these people a platform. Seriously, what satanic ritual do I have to perform in order to trade each and every one of these greasy clout chasers for one singular Jenna Marbles video because honestly I'll do it I'll do anything if you can't live without something it should be free simple as that water and and quesadillas but that's not the only pointless fight that's been happening on the internet recently YouTube's resident drama queens well two of them anyway there's 
quite a lot. Trisha Paytas and Nikita Dragon were going absolutely ham at each other over on Twitter this week. Has there ever been a YouTube drama that Trisha Paytas hasn't got involved in? You know, she's like the candy man. You say drama in a mirror three times and she pops up and just starts beefing with people on Twitter. In the pink corner, she's had more breakdowns on her kitchen floor than I've had hot dinners. It's Trisha Paytas! In the other pink corner, she's had more skin colours than I've had hot dinners. Yeah, you get the point. It's Nikita Dragon! Trisha opens the match by taking a jab at Nikita over her Snapchat show, which up until now, I didn't even think that people over the age of 18 still use Snapchat, except OnlyFans girls and drug dealers, let alone had a full reality-style TV show on there. But, you know, you learn something new every day. To be honest, I'd probably make fun of that too, so... One nil to Trisha. I'm not entirely sure how real boxing matches are judged. I don't think this is correct, but I'm gonna go with it anyway, so just mind your business. Nikita took a swift jab back, saying that she's actually in the process of filming a Netflix show and that her Snapchat show had over 30 million views. Again, I'm a little bit doubtful of the data because I don't even think 30 million people have Snapchat. Just saying. Nevertheless, it is currently even Stevens between the two problematic faves. She starts calling out Trisha for her past content, which was incredibly harmful to the trans community. Two on to Nikita. Okay, so I'm gonna level with you here. In between all of this, there was a lot. Not wearing a mask during a pandemic, graveyards that have had more activity than Nikita's meet and greets, hanging out with guys who have a history of being inappropriate with minors, the list goes on. Do these people genuinely not have any other responsibilities other than putting on makeup and being irritating online? So you like watching sports, but not the woman version of those sports. Maybe you don't like the sport. Maybe what you like is watching sweaty men play with balls. It's time for... In this episode, we're looking at anti-lockdown protesters. Now, where I live, which unfortunately happens to be England, we've been in and out of lockdown since about March 23rd, 2020, which is exactly 379 days of lockdown. And saying that out loud, kind of makes me want to cry. Now we've only just started lifting restrictions, which is great, but three weeks ago, some people decided that they weren't going to take it any longer. With three weeks left. Three, three weeks, seven, 14, 20, 21 days left. I'm not good at math. Which according to my calculations, makes anti-lockdown protesters raging idiots. I swear to God, they're like the human personification of a migraine. Seriously, it's like 1,000 Piers Morgans all screaming at the same time, throwing a tantrum because their mom banned them from playing on the Xbox. That's the vibe I get. I am not impressed with the whole gender shit going on. Okay, and I'm not impressed with that hat. From one bunch of brainless idiots to another, David Dobrik and the Vlog Squad have come under fire recently after some of his ex-friends and co-creators came out about some pretty disgusting behaviour that happened while they were filming together. I don't quite think you could patch over this by buying some people a Tesla. Not this time, buddy. You know, it wasn't too long ago when David was like the messiah of YouTube. Everybody loved his videos, he could do no wrong. And that's why I think everybody on the internet is sort of a little bit shocked at this because it's a pretty big and dramatic fall from grace into his $9.5 million mansion. Mm, cozy. I'm sure he's very upset about it all, which is shown in his obligatory, I'm a YouTuber and I did something wrong, but I'm more upset about the fact that I'm being called out about it than my actual actions. Apology video, yeah, you know the ones. Yes, in true YouTuber fashion, he posted not one, but two apology videos. Now the first one was an incredibly humble and very detailed apology, you know, apologizing to his fans, apologizing to the people that he's hurt. I'm just kidding, it was two minutes long and wasn't even posted on his main channel. That wasn't even the best part. The creme de la creme was that he titled the video, Let's Talk, and then had the comments turned off. Waking up in the morning, thinking about so many things. I just wish things would get better. You know, I feel like if you want to become a big time successful YouTuber, you need three things. Number one, an engaging personality. Number two, probably very pretty. And number three, 
incredibly questionable morals. James Charles, where do we even start with this one? So the beauty guru has been outed yet again for sending incredibly inappropriate messages to minors. I mean, James, come on, they're just trying to do their job. Can you just let them dig coal out of the ground in peace? So a handful of TikTokers came forward with screenshots of messages that James had sent them asking for pics in the shower, being all horny, you know, generally just things that you say to people who aren't underage. So initially he did the old notes app apology on Twitter, which has a history of going down well. And when more and more allegations began to surface and people were continuing to talk about it, he quickly realized that it wasn't going away. And so in true YouTuber fashion, he posted an apology video. What is this? Is this his like seventh, eighth, 10th? Possibly. His PR team definitely deserve a raise. And I finally, finally came to a conclusion. It sucks and it is ridiculously embarrassing to admit this, but I think I have to, and that is that I'm desperate. That is quite possibly the only truth that James Charles has told throughout his entire career. And since that video, even more people have come out saying that he's tried to slide into their DMs when they were underage. The whole thing's a mess. I'm crossing my fingers that it's goodbye sister for the final time. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the video. You do not get a prize and you do not get to collect 200 when you pass go. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please let me know by leaving a cheeky thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate that. And let me know down in the comments, what do you think of the whole James Charles scenario fiasco nonsery drama conflama because I want to know your thoughts. And if you're not already, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and you can ding the bell to turn on my notifications so you know exactly when I post a new video. Thanks again for watching and I will see you guys next time with another video.